Hello and welcome to TVC News at 12. We begin in the United Kingdom, where a business and property court of England and Wales will on Monday deliver judgment in the case filed by Nigeria, saying to dismiss an $11 billion arbitration award uh, in favor of Process and Industrial Development Limited. The court is expected to decide whether Nigeria is liable to pay the money, which is meant to be a compensation for alleged breach of a gas contract. Another London court earlier issued a $6.6 .6 billion arbitration award against uh, Nigeria in January 2017 after the firm accused the federal government of reneging on an alleged 2010 contract to construct and operate a new gas processing facility in Calabar. Well, the P&ID lawyers uh, argued that the arbitration fee has grown to $11.4 billion in account of interest. Thereafter, Nigeria approached the Business and Property Court uh, seeking dismissal of the award over an allegation that the purported contract was a product of dishonesty and manipulation engineered by the foreign firm. Meanwhile, the Vice President Kashim Shatima has uh, arrived uh, the United States to attend the African Development Bank World Food Prize. Vice President Shatima will be a special guest and give the keynote speech at the event. He is expected to participate in high-stake uh, meetings across some states of the U.S. with manufacturers, investors and top government officials. The Vice President will use the platform to speak to the potentialities and endowments of Nigeria's agricultural sector who investors and push for commitment in achieving President Bola Tinubu's mandate and programs for Nigeria's agri-food sector. It is also expected to highlight reforms being instituted in the Nigerian agri-food sector by the President and engage several partners and investors in opportunities for investment in Nigeria. The Benue Police Command has confirmed the death of the Divisional Police Officer in Otupo, three other policemen and several other persons in Friday's bank robbery. The Commission of Police also stated that four persons have been arrested in connection with the robbery and two of the robbers killed. By Walkwata reports. This is the mood in Otupo community a day after more than 10 persons were killed during the robbery of four commercial banks. Residents are still in shock. Arriving the scene to ascertain the level of damage done is the Deputy Governor Sam Hode, alongside the Commissioner of Police, who gives a breakdown report of the incident. You all are aware I lost my DPO in this operation and three other women police. There are others also that were on admission currently. I'm a little bit fulfilled that at least the police were able to kill at least two of them and some arrests made. At least from there, let's start something and see how we can move further. Together with the Ochi Doma, the deputy governor visits the police headquarters in Otupo, which was the first place attacked by the bank robbers. There, he learned that the robbers had, after their operation, been intercepted by a joint force with two bank robbers gone down and four others arrested. That uh, we were in the, the late afternoon, we had a lot of gunshots, and uh, when we had that, they were taking, they, they were, they were rising and all that. And then they, I called on the police, particularly uh, uh, Lieutenant Kisova, who took over the command of the total event that happened here. He was in the bush, we thought throughout the, the army, crossover in the army, the, the Delta. And Some boys came into town in their numbers, walked into our town, and started shoot, robbing our banks. We're using IED to blow our banks. Four banks or five banks, they first of all went to the police station. The deputy governor also visits victims receiving treatment on gunshot wound. He says the state government will design a better security architecture to prevent a reoccurrence. We, we have seen this happen. We are going to sit down as a community to work together with governments so that together we can design a new security architecture to respond to this level of criminality. We are not going to allow this to be swept under the carpet. 
The daredevil robbers were said to have operated for over two hours, killing more than 10 persons. Mayowa Okwato, TVC News, Otupo. I'm moving to Plateau State, where the leadership of Operation Save Heaven has organized a symposium for religious leaders in the state to ensure peaceful coexistence among communities. The event is aimed at cautioning as well as drawing the attention of the leaders to desist from preaching sermons or messages that may incite the public. TVC News Plateau correspondent Fulham Joshua filed the report. Selected clergymen from the Christian and Muslim faiths are seated in this hall. The leadership of the Operation Safe Heaven has invited them to a symposium on the need for them to prioritize preaching sermons and messages that promote unity, love, religious tolerance, and peaceful coexistence. It is believed that when preachers use their platform to vilify or demonize other faiths or groups, it foils religious or ethnic tensions which can lead to conflicts and undermine peaceful coexistence. Religious leaders as trusted guides and moral authorities have a crucial role to play in this noble pursuit for peace. The sermons we deliver have a profound impact on the beliefs, attitudes and the actions of your followers. A paper presentation on the subject matter was presented by two prominent religious leaders to the clergymen in attendance. The absence of religious tolerance has been the major factor responsible for violence, for violent religious conflicts experienced during the past two decades in the platform. All the religious communities must educate their clergy on the need for religious harmony and the toleration of other faiths. A question and answer as well as commendation session were next for participants to understand areas deemed not clear on the subject matter. If anybody has any assignment, don't hesitate to call me or call the general leader. We will get a brief and send it to you if it means someone in there to call. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have observed. Women are gradually being involved in conflicts and even criminal activities. We should ask for my prayer that God should force us to put what we have received today into practice. At the end of this symposium, it is agreed that any religious leader caught in the act of preaching sermons that are inciting will be arrested and face the law. For Nom Joshua, TVC News, Rukuba Cantonment. And staying with security concerns, the Nigerian army has flagged up a military exercise in parts of Ifeludun, local government area of Kwara State to flush out criminal elements and strengthen security of lives and properties. The operation, codenamed Operation Steel Water 3, is holding in Ruago and adjoining areas and is uh, conducted by troops from the 22 Brigade. The Kwara State Government has now implored traditional rulers to cooperate with the Nigerian Army and other security agencies. The Nigerian Army has been out there conducting operations as well as supporting other security agencies to ensure that we have a safe and secure country. This is in line with the command philosophy of the chief of army staff, which is to transform the Nigerian army into a well-trained, equipped and highly motivated force towards achieving our constitutional responsibility within a joint environment. And this is what we are doing to ensure that we continue to come out there to work, to ensure that we chase out all forms of, form of criminals, including Terrorist kidnapped. Talking politics, the African Democratic Congress wants uh, residents of Kogi State to shun all forms of political violence and thuggery as the elections draw near. Governorship candidate of the party, Leke Abejide, who addressed party faithful in uh, Kota Dikarthi, pledged to address what he calls the impoverishment of the people caused by irregular payment of salaries. 
Again, the campaign train of the African Democratic Congress is on the move and has brought its message to the people of Kutong Karfi, where the paramount ruler of the area pronounces his blessings on the candidate. So it's my prayer. We have come to seek for our blessing, which I had given you before. So today again, we are here to receive the same blessing. And I want to say, have my blessing. You have my blessing. And I pray that it will translate into votes for you. The ADC campaign team then engages stakeholders in a town hall meeting where Lake Abedide is emphatic that issues of irregular salary will be squarely addressed if he is voted into office. The stakeholders, convinced by his fervor, pledge their support. To youth, as I said, you are my focus. Don't fight. Let us campaign. And then the government that is not doing well for you, use your finger, take him out. You go do arm. The team proceeds to the campaign ground where they are received by a tumultuous welcome from eager party supporters. The ADC governorship candidate insists he will be committed to empowering women, as this is the key to reducing poverty in the street. Satisfied with the turnout of party supporters in Kutun Karfi, the ADC campaign train departs the town with a promise to sensitize the electorate in other parts of the state.